guys, here it is. By special request from Lack of Foresight Gaming, I am doing a learning game of Victory at Sea. So, don't know how to play this. In fact, I've only partially painted um, some of the ships here that I'm going to use today. Uh, so, again, this is from the Battle for the Pacific box set, two-player box set. I'm going to show you the ships that I'll be playing with today, and then we will get going from there. So first off, we have a Northampton class heavy cruiser that's partially painted. This is the USS Chicago, but we're going to just play it as a generic Northampton. And then we have the Portland class cruiser. This model is actually the Indianapolis, but we're going to play it as a generic Portland class cruiser. On the Japanese side, we have the Furutaka class cruiser. This is actually the Furutaka, but we are going to play it generic. And then we have a Fubuki class destroyer. So for the U.S. side, that actually adds up to 270 points. And the Japanese side is 275. So that should be pretty even, even though the U.S. side has the bigger ships. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Again, this is my first time playing, so I'm going to flub a lot of the rules. If I miss something, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, enjoy the solo battle report for Victory at Sea, Battle for the Pacific. All right, guys, welcome to the first ever uh, battle report for Victory at Sea on the channel. Uh, this is more of a learning battle report akin to what I did with Battletech. I will be playing solo today, so not only will I be playing the game on both sides, I will also be handling the filming and, and all that wonderful stuff. So it's going to be a little bit challenging. Have patience with me. I don't know the rules, so I'm going to be going off of what I'm reading in the book. We might go a little bit slower than normally. In fact, we might even make this a two-parter because I don't know how far I can get today uh, with filming uh, the learning portion of this game. Uh, but we'll we'll do our best and see if we can power through and maybe get a quick game done. I'm only playing two ships on each side. Again, uh, you saw in the intro that I have a Portland class and a Northampton heavy cruiser class on the U.S. side. And I have a Furutaka class and a Fubuki destroyer um, on the Japanese side. So right now we're going to roll off for initiative. Uh, whoever uh, rolls, whoever wins initiative gets to place their ships second. So it's kind of like Battletech in where you will have a, more of a, like a tactical overview. You see one of the ships come on. And I think it's a, I go, you go in terms of placement. So if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments below. Let's roll for initiative. So this is going to be the U.S. side. U.S. rolled a 7. I don't know if you guys can see that. And now the Japanese side. Japanese have rolled an 8, so the Japanese will be going second. Alright, so I've elected to have the Portland class cruiser move onto the board. It has a flank speed of 6. So um, basically you use the measuring tool that's right here. And you actually measure from the, um, from the bridge of the ship, which is right here. And then move 2 inches up to 6 inches. But every two inches, you can make a 45 degree turn uh, in any way. So um, we're going to go ahead and just move it straight onto the uh, the mat here. So that this is two inches. If I'm getting this correct, two inches from the bridge. So that's the first two right there. And I'm going to mo move the entire flank speed of the ship. So another two. And then, let's see, right there, and then another two. So I have moved the Portland class. Now at this point I would move one of the Japanese um, ships onto the board. All right, as the Japanese player, I have elected to move the Fubuki destroyer onto the board. Um, it has a flank speed of seven, so it goes a little bit faster than the heavy cruise, or the Portland that uh, just moved on board, so. I'm going to move it two, and then, oops, another two, and then I think I'm going to move it. So you want to take uh, this measuring right here. So this is 45 degrees. So I'm going to actually move this like that, and then I'm going to do another two. So the bridge is right there, right there, and then I'm going to move another one inch, so uh, right there. 
So that's the Japanese destroyer turn. We're gonna move back to the US. All right, so I have the Northampton heavy cruiser on the board now. The Northampton has a flank speed of six, just like the uh, Portland here. So we're just gonna move from the bridge two inches. And then another two inches. And then the last uh, two inches here. And that's the Northampton's turn. All right, here we are with the Furutaka. We're gonna move, again, uh, flank speed of six. So we'll move two, and then two, and then another two. And that is it for the movement of all the ships on the board. All right, guys, now that everybody has moved on the board, is now the person or player who won initiative that gets to declare uh, one of their ships to fire first and I'm declaring the Furutaka there to the Portland and um, you want to look at your and I'll bring this card up and hopefully you guys can see it if it focuses well in any case depending on the turret that you are aiming with um, you have firing marks on on everything so at this point uh, my turret my turret A and turret B the the two turrets um, have the Portland targeted in their firing arc and the measurement at this point is 16 inches so I am in short range and now I have to figure out what I need to do next so yeah so we are at, we are at short range uh, from the Furutaka to the Portland all right I'm going to read through some of the rules here for uh, firing so each weapon system on a ship card has an attack die score uh, both turret A and B for the Furutaka have two attack dice each. And then um, for every result of uh, four or more hits been scored, however each attack dice will be modified as follows. So um, the modifier that we have is target is at short range. There is no modifier. It's plus zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll for both turrets. And every hit that's a four or every, every roll that's a four is going to be a hit. So... Uh, right now I have two hits and then once uh, we've scored on the target it's time to see what damage has been caused. Every weapon has a damage dice score listed. Uh, so for those two turrets it's one each um, or one die. So this is number of d6 rolled for every attack dice that's successful. Weapon systems AP armor piercing scores up, then added or subtracted from each damage roll. So for the Furutaka, there is no AP for those shots. So really what I need to roll now is a D6 for every dice that was uh, successful. And then that'll determine how much damage the Portland will take from the Furutaka. So I got um, three on one die, three on the other. So the Furutaka, the Portland's actually going to take six damage. And uh, what you do, and then we'll see if we can get this to focus a little bit. Um, you just move this slider down uh, however many pips of damage it took. So in this case, six. So from nine, we're down to 24 um, hit points on the Portland. So, All right, so to just make it easy, I'm going to have the Portland attack the Furutaka there. Um, we both know, or we all know that, um, it is 16 inches away, so that's short. So, alright, so I have six attack die. I'm gonna roll and see if we can score four or more. There's no modifiers, obviously. So we actually have only one hit from the Portland to the Furutaka. And now we're gonna find out how much damage it causes. So, the Portland has only one attack die. So we're going to see how many hits the Furutaka is going to take. And it's going to be two. So. Alright. So we are down two uh, hit points for the Furutaka. Alright guys. So I'm targeting the Fubuki to the Portland. But it is at about 19, 20 inches from bridge to bridge. Which puts it at the extreme range of the Fubuki Destroyer which means I get a minus two uh, modifier to my roll. 
so again, I need four, but minus two, so I need six. I need to roll six in order to hit with the destroyer's light guns. So we're going to go ahead and give that a shot. I need a six, and I miss with a two. So we're going to move on to the Northampton. The Northampton has three attack die each in its basically front arc. I'm going to target the Fubuki, and we're going to see... Um, I think uh, that since that's 20 inch or 19 inch, but I'm going to count it as 20. So that is still within, I guess, short range. Guys, I don't know if uh, it's like Battletech where if you are above like the, the specific range, then you would have to consider it long. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to consider it long. So that'll be a minus two. Um, so I'm going to need sixes to roll. Uh, for hitting. Um, if that's wrong, let me know in the comments below. So I need sixes. And I have six attack die. I am targeting the Fubuki from the Northampton with both uh, the turret A and turret B. And I actually got one six. So that's a hit. Alright, so now we're going to see um, how much damage it causes. And the Northampton has one damage die. And then remember, keep in mind, destroyers, very tiny ships compared to the other cruisers that are on the board. So it might not last long. I think the Fubuki only has nine um, hit points here. So let's see what we get. Wow. So uh, the Northampton caused five points of damage to the Fubuki. That's quite a lot. That's over half. So we are down to four hit points with the Fubuki. This is going to be harsh. The Fubuki will uh, probably get destroyed if it takes another hit like that. All right. So now we are pretty much at the end of our first turn here. Uh, this is usually the time you do damage control and other functions or performs. Nothing to clean up. There weren't any crits. So we're just going to move on from the end phase and go to turn two. All right, guys, so we are at turn two. I'm going to roll initiative for the U.S. That's a zero or ten. That's a ten. And then for the Japanese, it's a seven. So the U.S. will be moving first. I'm going to go ahead and measure some distances here and figure out what I'm going to do next. All right, so the U.S. has gained initiative. Actually, that means that the Japanese get to move first. So what I'm going to do is... I think I'm going to move the Fubuki forward. I really want the Fubuki to do something before it gets taken out of the game. All right, so I have the Fubuki set up. We're going to move. Um, we're going to do the first movement of two from the bridge. So that's one. And then the second movement right there. And then I believe I'm going to make another turn. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to steam forward because I really want my light gun to be able to hit uh, the Northampton here, even if it doesn't cause too much damage. So we'll move one time, or another two, and then we're going to move one. So I'm a lot closer now to both the Portland and the Northampton. All right, so the Northampton is actually going to elect to move first. I want as the Northampton's captain to take out the Fubuki. Uh, so we're going to move up. That's two. And then two. And then we're going to turn so that all the turrets are going to be able to shoot at the Fubuki. So like that. And then we're going to do another two movement. So right there. All right, guys, here we go. This is the Furutaka lined up to move. So we're going to do the first movement here, like that. <coughs> Oops, going too far. And then like that. And then I'm actually going to turn to right there. And then I'm going to move another two. Let me just make sure. So like that. 
All right, so I have more turrets. I have more turrets uh, that can aim at the Portland. Now I'm going to set up the Portland to move. If you hear coughing in the background, that's my daughter. She's sick right now. Um, all right, so here is the Portland. All right, we're going to do the first of the two or six move it. So here. There. I got a little bit of a bump on here, so don't mind that, guys. And now, there. So now the Portland and the Furutaka are pretty much uh, side to side. We have the Northampton that's going to take aim at the Fubuki. Now we're going to see if one of these ships gets taken out. So let's see. We'll go Northampton to Fubuki first. I'm going to check firing arcs. So, yeah, it looks like uh, turret A, B, and X uh, have the Fubuki in its firing arc. So that's going to be nine, nine shots from those three turrets. And let me let me just measure to see how far we're. I mean, I'm sure I'm pretty sure that we are at close range. From the bridge. Okay, so it's a little bit further than point blank. So we're about, we're actually about nine inches. Nine inches. So we are at short range. That means no modifier. In fact, let's see. Still too far away for the light gun, so it'll only be turret A, B, and X. Again, we need fours to hit. And we got... Oops, let me get rid of those. We got five hits in. So that's one attack die each. I have a, I have a feeling that the Vibuki is not long for this world. So... <laughs> Let's see how much damage we cause. Yeah, the Fubuki has been sunk. Uh, in fact, it took 14 points of damage, so the Fubuki is gone. Um, probably shouldn't have charged in the Fubuki. I was hoping to win initiative with the Japanese in order to launch some torpedoes with the Fubuki, but um, yeah. Nope, that's it for that ship. I, w I wish I had a marker. So I'm just going to... Turn it on its side there. And now, um, I guess it's up to the Furutaka to do some damage. Gotta see if maybe I turn too far. No, um, I, I can hit with turrets A, B, and X. And actually, possibly with the light guns. So. You know, I'm just going to fire with the uh, turrets A, B, and X. So that is six. No modifier. In fact, hold on. Let's measure this out if I'm in point blank range or not. So we are at seven. I am within point blank range. So with point blank, let's see what we have here. Uh, I get a plus one modifier. So I need four ups, and then I'll have a plus one. So, didn't really help. I still only hit with two. And now I get to see how much damage the Furutaka will cost the, or cause to the Portland. That's one die each. And I caused six damage to the Portland. So let's see where we're at here. All right, this has actually hurt the Portland quite a bit. So I hit with a six. I, he took four, bring him down to ten on the card here. Uh, so we are down to 17 hit points on the Portland. I believe my math is correct there. So, all right. Uh, now we have uh, the Portland attacking 
uh, the Furutaka. And then all three turrets can hit, so that's nine shots again. That's actually pretty nice. The US has better gunnery on these ships than Japanese. So, seven. All right, so I got nine. Uh, we are in short or point blank range, so that's plus one to all the hits. Need fours. And this is a cock die. Okay, so. Wow, we got quite a few hits in here. Uh, so we have a. Wow. Okay, so I hit with eight dice. Four of them have three, so those are fours. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, that's gonna really hurt the Furutaka at this point. Um, so one, one die each. Basically just gonna roll this. Wow. That is going to be tough. Okay. So, one die each. We got eight hits. Yeesh. Okay, I'm going to add all this up and I'll be right back. All right, so that was a pretty devastating hit from the Portland to the Furutaka. The Furutaka actually took 30 points of damage, which I think actually destroyed it. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, you know what? That's game, guys. The uh, Furutaka was taken out with 30 points of damage. Um, I think that's right. It's one, one damage, uh, per, per die, per, per hit, I guess, right? Uh, if that's wrong, let me know. Again, this is my first time playing. This is a very short and bloody game. Uh, US victory, uh, the Furutaka been blown to bits, and so was the Fubuki. So, anyway, guys, that is my first game of Victory at Sea. I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes. You guys who are more expert at this game, please let me know. Uh, what I missed in the next learning game, I'll probably I'll probably play more ships here and see uh, if we can get some of the advanced rules um, going here. Uh, torpedoes, other stuff that would be uh, indicative of a more um, heavy gameplay. I think having more ships. The, so the distinct disadvantage of the Japanese is that is that their ships are more expensive than the U.S. And then the distinct advantage of the U.S. is that they are inexpensive and have pack a lot of firepower, uh, which is nice. Having three die per turret, that's uh, pretty devastating. So, all right, guys, that is it. If you like this video, go ahead and click like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you would. Click the bell notification icon to get notified of all new uh, battle reports for Victory C coming out of the channel. And then click the link in the description below to join our Discord server. That's the best way I can personally interact with you and chit-chat you about Victor 8C and any other game that we cover on the channel. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Victor 8C battle reports from Wargaming Noob Historical.